hi, Seth walked away. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you like flew out of the frame. Good morning. Hello. We're talking Good about morning. sex and intimacy. Get your questions ready. Mm-hmm. All right, let's Get check. Get your cues are. What's up? Check, check. Tony. My level's a git. Tony Chorus Rex. What? <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, oh, are you ready to start? I think so. What's up, Drew? All right. What's up, Tony? You done? And Dana. Uh, Dana. Drew Dana. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we're ready. Okay. What's up, guys? We have not recorded yet. Getting ready. Thank you for joining us again on Facebook Live oh. and Instagram Live. You actually ran into me. <laughs> I didn't say you ran into me. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage Radio. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. Gee, what are you doing? You turned and looked away at the dog <laughs> and I got totally distracted. Let's start I'm... over. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage Radio. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family <laughs> therapist. Welcome to AOM Radio. Hashtag, slash tag, uh, Anatomy of Marriage, Marriage Mornings. What's up? Hi, my name is Melanie Studley. We're so glad that you're here. And today we are talking about, we're answering our sex and intimacy questions for this week. This is the final episode of our sex week. And we hope that you've enjoyed the last four days of podcasts. Mm -hmm. We think that they are great. And yeah, we, we had some good like feedback them. on them and good questions. And today we're going to take those uh, questions and answer them to the best of our ability. Thank you so much for sending them in. And this show today is sponsored by getfaithful.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. It's an online, what? Uh, it's not sponsored by that. It's sponsored by Get Your Marriage On. Well, um, sponsored by several people. It's not. It's sponsored by Get Your Marriage On. This is the worst <laughs> episode we've ever done and it's live. Thanks for messing up the pre-roll. You messed it up. Anyway, Get Today's Your Marriage show On. show is brought to you by Get Your Marriage On, the uh, couples counseling app that's fast, fun, and never boring. Check it out. We co-created it. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's go. And every day we do four things: we pray, we share intentions, and we share gratitude. And then take uh, do uh, question starters from the app. So let's pray. Thank you, God. Please help us on the show today. <laughs> we made it. We made it. I, no, uh, thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you for all that you have given us and uh, given us uh, to be stewards of. Thank you for the show. I pray it's helpful for people who are listening and also helpful for us. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And we um, ask that you guys do this or encourage you to do this with your partners. So pray together, mm -hmm. talk about your intentions and your gratitudes together, and talk, do your questions, get the yeah. app and do the conversation starters. But All right. I'm thankful for the conversation that you and I had yesterday. Not thankful for the conversation, but thankful that you had a very kind and loving listening ear. Mm -hmm. And it was really, uh, we got... We got real yesterday with some stuff. I mm -hmm. think this this sex and intimacy week has brought up things for us, mm -hmm. some growth points and things that we just needed to talk about. And it has been really good and fruitful. And I thank you for listening to me yesterday and uh, talking. You're welcome. Nice. I, can I expound on what we talked about? Sure. So Seth called me yesterday. I wanted. I needed to get away from our kids. <laughs> our uh, our daughter is like on some new crazy town of everything, and she's really hard to deal with. We love her, but she's hard to deal with right now. And so I literally said, I'm going to Fred Meyer slash Kroger, and I'm going to meander by myself and look at just clearance clothes, and um, just to get my to do anything and not be at home. And so Seth called me, and he was. We were talking about the episode we talked about yesterday mm -hmm. um, of our show, like sex and intimacy, and we don't actually feel connected, and maybe there's something missing, and what is it, and all this stuff. And we talked for a super long time while I mm -hmm. had earbud or ear whatever they are, AirPods, Pods. Mm -hmm. and walked around and looking at clearance clothes while we talked about our sexual relationship. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm only saying that to help you understand what these conversations can look like. Right. It does not mean you sit in front of each other and stare and talk awkwardly. Good mm -hmm. morning, Lily. Uh, and so I don't want people to think that you have to have these conversations one way. You mm -hmm. don't. And our conversation was literally probably 40 minutes to an hour long walking yeah. around in Fred. I was in Fred Meyer. He was at home uh, harvesting stinging nettles as one does. Yeah. And that was how our intimacy conversation went. Mm -hmm. So I want, I'm again, only sharing that so that you understand that it doesn't have to look one way. It can be specific to you and your mm -hmm. spouse and the things you've got going right. on. Right. And I think, I believe the thing that made that conversation uh, helpful was we were 
I was thinking about it, and I, actually in the cold shower this morning, I was thinking of this thing in drug and alcohol counseling that is a, a thing, like the effect of a drug that you take or a substance really depends on six things, and one of those things is the set and the setting. Oh, okay. Like if I just say, which I, I don't do this, but say I'm going to like smoke weed at a party and it's crazy, mm -hmm. right? So the setting will affect how that drug affects my body. Uh -huh. Rather, if I'm like by myself at home, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. it's chill. So the set and setting of uh, the conversation really sets the tone and the after effect. Like mm -hmm. I was outside for an hour, literally picking nettles in, in nature and just being very calm and very enjoying myself, right? Mm -hmm. In a good way. The kids were gone. And then Melanie was away from the kids too at a grocery store. Mm -hmm walking around alone, right? So the setting, mm -hmm. the, the set and setting had a lot to do with our conversation. Things were chill, things yeah. were calm. We couldn't have had that conversation if we were home. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if the kids were home, I don't even around. think that we would have had that conversation if we were just talking about it straight up. I just don't think we would have. Right. I think we needed a little bit of space and distance and mm -hmm. not staring at each other with our eyes. I think right. that would have felt so mm -hmm. strange. Yeah. And even even the, the set the setting just over the phone. Sometimes it's easier. Like oh, when yeah. we do voice memos and stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's it's easier. So we I you know, I would actually like to do a whole episode on set and setting mm -hmm. and, and expectations yeah. of things because it's huge and I have the notes I've never shared them with you, but they're really, really good. Uh, Lori Tosh says, just found your podcast last week. Thank you. I love it. Yay! Thank you. Yay. So We're much. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you so much. When we go live on Instagram, which is basically every weekday. And Facebook. And Facebook. You guys can join, uh, uh, request to join in the Instagram feed and ask a question live. You will go on the show. You'll go on the podcast. You won't be anonymous. And that is so much fun. Recently, um, uh, Aaron Davis joined us. And that was really fun. That Aaron, was very fun. I need to send you a code for a free workbook too because you joined the live. So... Uh, what is your thankfulness? I'm thankful for the same thing. I'm thankful that um, you're willing to have those conversations. And even yesterday, as we were talking, you kept saying, I didn't mean to say this. I didn't mean to call you and talk this long. I didn't mean to share all these things. I, right. You kept kind of <clears throat> backpedaling, like, I feel weird. Like you were mm. telling me, I feel uncomfortable about this. But at the same time, also saying, I know this is important right. and we need to talk about it. So I'm just thankful to you at, at your ability to kind of push through that discomfort and have it, you know, still have these good and healthy conversations, yeah. even though it is awkward. And yeah. A it, lot of, it a matters. Lot of, and, 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 and things that put us out of our comfort <clears throat> zone, I've learned, uh, are good. And yeah. You, and you should push into those. What's up, his and her money? Uh, glad to see you guys. Uh, Anna says, what? I'm thankful for you guys and your inspiration, <laughs> inspirations for practical life stuff. Well, thank you so much. You guys push us to do great things and hopefully we encourage you to do good things as well. Can you guys see the dog? He's on his new dog What's bed. Up, Look at how cute he is. Anyway, um, but so, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that. So now our intentions. And again, we encourage you guys to do this with your spouse. Your intention is essentially you saying, this is how I want to behave today. My mm -hmm. intentions for my behavior are this based on what you're not doing well. Right. So that's the best way I can think mm -hmm. to explain it. Uh, again, I go to my, my intentions right now are all around being positive, bringing that energy. And I listened to Lewis Howe's interview Dave Ramsey yesterday, mm -hmm. which was just phenomenal. I had never heard him be interviewed by somebody else. It's such a good episode. Lewis Howe has the School of Greatness podcast, and he interviewed Dave, Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. And one thing that Lewis asked Dave was something like, how do you become a person of integrity? I can't even remember the question. And Dave Ramsey was just like, you do it. You make up your mind and you do it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you stop having bad, you know, you stop the bad behavior and you mm -hmm. literally go, okay, I'm doing the good behavior now. Right. And as I was listening, I was thinking about my own uh, lack or inability or historical lack of ability to show you affection. Mm -hmm. And um, between that interview and the Marissa Peer interview, hers just saying, just mm -hmm. start doing it. Mm -hmm. Stop, you know, faffing around and start being the thing you say. Right. And lie to yourself and say, I am really, uh, like, I am really positive. Mm -hmm. Lie to yourself until you become that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is so exciting and encouraging. So that's mm -hmm. my intention for today is to mm -hmm. force myself in the best possible way to be all the things that I want to be for mm -hmm. you. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a similar intention. Like when I'm here right now with you, when I am fixing to go to work, when I come home from work, be present 
with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just be present. Hey, yeah. what's up? Look into your eyes and be present. What if your intention was to do the dishes at night? No, that's no. That's such a good idea. No, that's What's I'm, such a good idea? I'm not choosing that one. Patricia uh, says. <laughs> love you guys. Listened a while back and found you again. Yay. Perfect timing. So needed to hear the messages. Awesome. Yay. Thank you so much. Yay, yay, Thank yay. you so much. Um, yes, it says lie to yourself. Great wording. Your body and self believes what your mind tells it. That's right. We are like soul sisters. Change what your, is happening? Change your thinking. Change your life. Yes. Right. Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer. Anyhow, okay. what's let's, your intention? Did you already say it? Yeah, yeah you already I just said, said it. it. So let's okay. jump into the questions. Okay. So today we're just answering sex and intimacy questions that have been sent into us about this uh, little mini series that we did and the questions that we received through our app. And let me just say really quickly, if you don't know this, I, I realize I didn't tell people very often. In our app, Get Your Marriage On, we have an expert Q&A section. Mm -hmm. So you can literally ask questions inside of our app. Some of those questions get put on our show. And the questions also get answered by the community of app users. Mm -hmm. So you can ask questions about <clears throat> hormones and intimacy. You can ask questions about parenting and childbirth or miscarriage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's a community of people in the app to answer them and help you. And the questions get answered on our show. So I All right. so check it out. All right. First question, sex and antidepressants. How can I still try and enjoy sex when I have no sex drive because of my antidepressants that I have been on for 18 years? <laughs> All right, so that's a good one. Obviously, uh, some side effects of anti-anxiety meds, antidepressants, and other things uh, cause to, uh, I mean, a, a negative side effect is a decreased sex drive, uh, low sex drive, no sex drive, right? And if you've been on antidepressants for 18 years, then obviously your body is fully assimilated and acculturated to that, uh, to that medicine, right? So this is a good one. I'm gonna I'm gonna go more of the way of talk about it, and you're gonna have to be really intentional about it. And I, I think you know we had a thing of um, about uh, mindful mindfulness, like getting your your mind in in the right. Hold thing. on, let me plug what you're talking about. Okay. So in our app, I'm gonna talk about the app a thousand times today because in our app. We have a tab under the, it's in the tools section, and it says meditations. You guys, I wrote a get in the mood meditation. Mm -hmm. It is, there's the introduction, it's five minutes long, and then the meditation itself is like 20 with, uh, it's, it's, there's music, it's like sound at the end, so mm -hmm. part of it is literally me reading to you about, I'm walking you through a guided meditation to get your body in the mood for mm -hmm. sex. Mm -hmm. That came from a desire from my own self to be like, I cannot get in the mood for sex. I, it is such a struggle for me to put my brain into that space. Mm -hmm. I need something like a guided sex meditation. I, I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but it's incredibly helpful. So that is one way, one very intentional and mm -hmm. very, very easy, like you could get it right now, way mm -hmm. to try to get, to, to work through this, because this is a thing. Was there something else yeah. you were going to say? Well, and and one thing too. I think we all have waves of higher desire, lower desire. And if it is low desire for uh, a long time, I want to I want you to say to yourself, "Hey, there's there's nothing wrong with me. This is a side effect of uh, anti-depression or anti-anxiety and give yourself grace on that because what we focus on expands mm -hmm. and if, if I'm if we're gonna focus on or if this person is focusing on I just gotta get us higher sex drive higher sex drive it's like you know a, a watch pot never boils kind of thing uh -huh. yeah so <clears throat> let yourself breathe give yourself grace and go easy if they, you know and I'm not gonna say oh yeah just try this for a day and then boom your desire will come back Go easy. Try this meditation, and it's a very clean meditation too. It's yeah, not, it's, it's not, not anything weird. It's weird, or, literally or, or just about your own mind. There's nothing functified uh, in it at all. Let's see. Uh, Lily says, "I did the same. Simply being just how I want to be and telling myself I am happy and mm -hmm. positive works. Yes, it does. Yes. And yes, good question. Same. I've been on antidepressants for three mm -hmm. years. Talk to your doctor. I requested my doctor." For my doctor specifically to yep. keep my sex drive. That was yeah, the one I was going to say true. is that you can literally ask for a different type of medication. Not that you should if you've been on the same one for 18 years. That's a big mm -hmm. shift. One thing I did want to say too is that one of my closest friends struggles with the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Her antidepressant is to, like they say on the thing. Like you get, what is that called? Inorgasmia or whatever. Right, like you can't yeah. have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. But she said what she does because she takes it every day. 
So she actually will, and she's taken it for 20 years. Mm. She says she will just skip if she knows that she's going to have sex with her husband. Mm. And she is a doctor. So the woman knows what she's doing. Right. It's never messed her up. And mm -hmm. so I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not a doctor. Don't take my word or sue me right. if something goes weird. I'm not a <laughs> doctor. You heard it here. What's Don't up? sue me. What's up, Matthew? Good to see you. Um, but Bye. that's something I, mm -hmm. I think is really important. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I am on three different medicines instead of just one, but I still have my drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it affects obviously people differently in mm -hmm. different ways. So that's a really good question. I would talk to your doctor about it to get that uh, to, to get the medical piece advice. Medical advice piece I can give obviously a therapeutic mm -hmm. piece, but I think I know that if we are not giving ourselves grace, and I know that if we're just focusing on it, focusing on it, focusing on it then it may not happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen to the Marissa Peer and Lewis Howes episode where mm -hmm. Marissa Peer talks about people's own, the way they talk about, like their internal dialogue, like, I can't have an orgasm, I mm -hmm. can't have an orgasm. Well, you're never gonna if you're talking that way, right? Mm -hmm. So change how you talk from that to, I'm gonna have an orgasm. It's gonna be amazing. Right. I'm gonna love this sex. Like, yeah. I know that sounds silly, but it is it doesn't super, sound silly super helpful. At all. Somebody says probiotics and focusing on eating a healthy diet mm. might be helpful too. So, yeah. okay, the re and this is me, a therapist, talking. So, the research bears out that uh, antidepressants alone, they do work, obviously, or we, we wouldn't do it, but there's a higher rate of efficacy for clients who have talk therapy, who mm. change their diet who exercise somewhat regularly and uh, eat healthy foods along with the antidepressant, right? Mm -hmm. So as we talk about all the time on the show, the biopsychosocial spiritual model, right? So we can we can talk about the psycho, just, I almost just shot a bird like putting up <laughs> one of fingers like that. <laughs> um, sorry, don't mean to flip you off. Uh, I'm giving depression to bird, <laughs> right? No. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Biopsychosocial spiritual. Yeah, so the antidepressants and medication only address the bio and the psycho, right? So we're leaving out the spiritual and the other piece of the bio. Okay, what are we eating? How are we exercising? What are we doing? So let's make sure that we have all those in mm -hmm. check. For um, sure. And then this question says, do you feel those waves or seasons of highest slash low desire are common in people not on medication too? We go through seasons of super hot sex and then seasons of leave me the F alone. <laughs> <laughs> is this common? So, yes, and one of the things I wanted to say about that when I was, I was reading it mm -hmm. was I started tracking my cycle because my neighbor, the doctor, was telling me that she had her daughter doing it to track her moods. And I'm like, I've never thought to track my cycle. Like, why would I? Who cares? Um, so I started using an app. The funniest thing about it is that in the different parts of my cycle, my desire goes from leave me the F alone mm -hmm. to like super hot, which is so weird. And it's like, it's typically after I've had my menstrual cycle or my period, I guess, where I'm like ready to rumble. And that's the most fertile time. I'm ready to rumble. Ready to rumble. <laughs> rumble in the jungle. I like the bio piece of that. Okay, we're going to read this question right here. Yep. So, all right. I, I, hold on. I want to for sure get, uh, do that one first. Yeah. Do that one. That's uh, so, the one I was pointing at. Next one. My husband and I just got married three weeks ago. Yeah! Congratulations. That's in awesome. In the middle of the corona craziness. I was just wondering if you could give some advice for newlyweds, especially in this strange time, about how to begin our sex life together well. We waited until we got married to have sex. We are not having any issues or anything. We're enjoying getting to know each other on a new level now that we're married. But we both want to do this part of life well. Mm -hmm. Grow together in intimacy and truly enjoy it. Any mm -hmm. insight would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for all your work. Well, first of all, congratulations. That's awesome that you guys just got married. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that you get the best marriage workbook ever. I honestly say that. What? Nothing. Can I smile? You yes. said Bever. Oh, I said Bever. Sorry. <laughs> best marriage the best marriage, 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 marriage ever. workbook ever, which you can go to anatomyofmarriage.com and get. And we talk about sex in there. We talk about all kinds of things that we weren't taught in premarital or even sex ed in school. And uh, also things that I didn't even learn in graduate school, which is nuts. So I would get that book for sure. And I would say what... Uh, I, I wish that I had learned things differently when we first got married of uh, sex as connecting, not just like, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, let's, let's take this slow. And I'm, I'm not saying like slow is like, oh, I'm kind of like leery of this. I'm saying slow and enjoy it and be present, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like completely present and in, in my body and in you and your body and... Mm -hmm. The, the spiritual side of sex, right? 
Mm -hmm. I wish I knew more about that. One of the things that, yeah, I think that's good. One of the things mm -hmm. that stands out to me in this particular question and what I wish I had known in the first few weeks and months of our marriage mm -hmm. is that there is, if you haven't heard season one where we talked to Dr. Corey Allen, um, and the science of love, I would listen to that episode. Mm -hmm. So he talks about phenylethylamine is a chemical that is like a bonding chemical that people have when they fall in love. A pair bonding. So, so what mm -hmm. happens with phenylethylamine is it can last from six months to two years, but it goes away and you cannot get it again mm -hmm. unless you get a different relationship. That's why people uh, like chronically date new people mm -hmm. and they date them for two years and then they break up because that phenylethylamine feels so good. It's mm -hmm. like a love drug. It's the thing that makes you want to be with your partner, mm -hmm. but it literally goes away. And when it goes away, you are going to feel like, what did I oh, even do? On, why yeah. did I, this person doesn't, oh, they don't fulfill me and my life is a mess and I thought it was so happy. It's gonna make you question everything mm -hmm. unless you know that it's coming. And then when you, and, and I, I just wish that I had known that. I think that would be really helpful because it's the thing that happens and all of a sudden you have this weird shift and people feel it within the first year of their marriage. Throw up a heart if you felt this within right. the first year or two of getting married where you thought, I mean, when we first were dating, we had sex all the time and now we barely have sex. Mm -hmm. It's the loss of phenylethylamine. Your body is like, you got the mate, just now just have babies. Right. Like, like, don't worry about being happy, just have babies. Right, procreate. And procreate mm -hmm. and, and do that thing. That's something that I wish I had known is that, uh, you see the hearts are flying, yeah. um, is yeah. that the phenylethylamine thing. And then, but again, getting the best marriage workbook ever is so important because it talks about in, chap in, the, in the chapter, the science of love chapter about sex, it, one of the things that it explores is your um, thoughts around sex, your historical understanding of mm -hmm. sex, what were you taught? Mm -hmm. If you were a virgin, I'm assuming you were raised in a church. Uh, in a conservative Christian setting, and if your partner is also a virgin, that has a lot of implications to it that are great, and a lot that aren't maybe so great mm -hmm. and healthy. And you will, you may run into trouble down the line. Mm -hmm. It might not be, you might not be running into it now, but it's helpful to know what your thoughts are about sex mm -hmm. going into it before you even run into those stuff. So think sense? about it this way: you may come across things. Well, I think a a. A, a wise person is willing to look at things and uh, in, in a different way and is willing to unlearn some stuff, right? Yes. So when Melanie's talking about maybe you grew up a certain way, uh, we all have a negative sex narrative, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's some shame around there, just like, oh, this is this is weird. It's only about uh, orgasm and whatever, mm -hmm. and that's no, that's not it. There's 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 many more components to that. Somebody says. Uh, Someone type phenylethylamine. That's that's close. Uh, phenylethylamine. Oh boy, I don't. Um, it's I can't phenol spell it. Yeah. Ethylamine. It's, oh, well, I think it's maybe P -H -E you can put it in notes or something. N O L. I don't know. Phenylethylamine. Um, and then it just says, "I always thought there was something wrong in our relationship." Yeah. So it's really weird because mm -hmm. it's this trippy chemical thing that it stops happening, and you're like, "I must hate. I must not be in love. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? Mm -hmm. I must not be in love." And that's not true. It is not true at all. And it's just, there are seasons to everything, like seasons to your menstrual cycle, seasons to the world, the, you know, summer and winter and fall and spring. The there season are seasons. we're in right now. With, COVID. With, uh, oh, Kenan's on, with Brovid-19. Oh, Kenan, there he is. Roronavirus. <laughs> all right, I'm going to read this question. Good morning. We have a close couple to us that is struggling in so many ways in their marriage, but our most recent conversations had to do with her lack of sex drive. She has hormonal issues due to thyroid cancer, which they removed the her thyroid gland. Add on marital issues daily. Three kids working as a nurse in a nursing home. Ooh, that'd be scary. Uh, just thought this may bring in some good combos about how stress and health issues can affect ses sex. Always thank you for all you do. Mm -hmm. You're welcome for what we do. Thank yes, you. We stress enjoy and health issues. I mean, so I want again to reiterate this uh -huh. idea that we are whole beings, mm -hmm. like biological, social, psychological, spiritual, sexual right. beings. We are not... Um, it's like if you look at a pie, mm -hmm. the whole pie is the whole pie. It's not just the crust. If you just have the crust, you don't have a pie. Then if you have... You, you have crust. Yeah. Oh, well. If you... Could you... 
If you have only the filling, you don't have a pie. If you right. have a pile of sugar, you don't have a pie. So it's all of the ingredients make us a human, mm -hmm. right? And so, <laughs> Kenan typed phenylethylamine there for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kenan. I knew it was spelled that way. <laughs> yeah, it's probably spelled that way first. I always said you everything first. But anyway, so the pie idea of us as a human, everything impacts everything. And they use mm -hmm. the idea too of like a mobile hanging mm -hmm. over a baby's bed. So you you know, think of the little things mm -hmm. that hang. If you pluck one of the mobile things off, the whole thing gets all screwed up and it shakes for a long time, right? right? We should just like get a mobile and do that so mm -hmm. people get the visual. So with this, so uh, all the all these added stressors, um, Hormonal issues, three kids, working in a nursing home, all this stuff. It goes back to how we open the show, the set and the setting. So our conversation was so rich and good yesterday because other things worked, right? Uh -huh. So this, advice for, for this person, I would say, hey, talk about it with your partner. If you guys haven't talked about it, talk about it and then set a time and a date for this so this gets for what, talking in for well for talking and then for also being together for actually having sex so you could schedule sex and what I what I would want to see happen is create the set and the setting you know you're talking about it for a couple of you know a week or two mm -hmm. or whatever and then you're gonna say hey this is going to be a chill thing that you, might be too much pressure um not if you do it right you know I, I, or, or, or okay how about this if well, you can do that way, but if you find yourself, if you feel too pressured by mm -hmm. that, then I want you to take a step, take a step back, and say, "Hey, all right, we're thinking about this. Let's just let's just try a couple different things." Okay, the kids are at grandma's. We're just gonna talk, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna do some yard work together. We're just gonna talk, mm -hmm. right? And just like it, 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 okay, you're exactly right. If I would have said, "Hey, I want to talk about sex later," and I'm gonna like talk about really deep emotional things with mm -hmm. you, is that cool, Mel? Okay. You're mm -hmm. like, "What are you doing, weirdo?" Yeah. Right? But it it just happens. So I mm -hmm. also want you to give space. So it's also good to, I don't know. Uh, it, it, okay, it could go either way. Sorry, I'm like I'm just having a bunch of ideas right now and going back and forth, but um. I'm gonna let you talk. Jeez, I just forgot my brain. I'm sorry. I don't didn't. I don't know. I feel like I made you forget your brain. No. But the thing that I think that comes along with this is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Is the idea that um, as hard as this is to mm -hmm. do, I think removing our emotions from things is so tremendously helpful with mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So, for example. In, you know in different questions that we have had like yesterday my wife or my I want my wife and I to do different things sexually But I don't know what she's gonna do. Mm -hmm. I think she's gonna get mad So that wife's reaction to her husband asking for something new sexually mm -hmm. is fear mm -hmm. It's just fear going and then attacking mm -hmm. the actual thing that happened right if we can understand that our emotions have sometimes they make absolutely no sense at all. Sometimes they are based in an experience that happened 25 years ago that is not related to now mm -hmm. and it's not related to this moment. And so I want to just throw the idea out because that's what I've been doing even in our own marriage, I mean forever in mm -hmm. our marriage, where if you would say, I would ask you to clean something and maybe you didn't clean it to my standard and then my emotional side got mad at you. Mm -hmm. Why? Like that's not helpful. I'm not sure. What if I just said, oh, actually can you still clean off the counter too a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, oh, it, you don't love me and everything's the worst and I hate my life and I, right? Like right. what if we, what if I hadn't done that? And the yeah. only reason I did do that was that I thought emotions had a say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just shouldn't. Right. Most of the time they just shouldn't. That's true. And in sex and intimacy, we have no skill set and it's almost all emotion. It's almost all shame, fear, doubt, I don't know, am I good enough, I'm too fat, I'm not skinny enough, I'm this, I'm too old, I'm too young, I have this, he looked at porn, I did that. And it's all this emotion that has nothing to do with this, mm -hmm. right? The present moment. And so in all of this, yes, there are facts, lots and lots of facts, like the thyroid cancer, hormonal mm -hmm. issues, all of that stuff, being a nurse, all of that stuff, stress, family but 
If you remove all of those, mm -hmm. if you remove the emotional tie that you think you must have to those issues mm -hmm. and you just say, I want connection mm -hmm. and, and pleasure. pleasure. That's right. And that's it. Yeah. And you don't add anything else on. I and, think that we'd be in a totally different place. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, se well, intercourse and sex may not be appropriate, may actually be too much to ask. It's, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? With, with all of these things going on, maybe it's okay. Hey, let's put this on the back burner for a minute, but, but you're still connecting emotionally. Yeah, you're I was going to say, but not connection. You're, you're still connecting and you can still have pleasure without like, you can have like emotional pleasure. Like, oh man, that was really a great conversation. Yeah. You know or I mean, I mean, just the endor the endorphins and the dopamine from right. cuddling. Yeah. And I think people get this so messed up that they think the only way that we can be intimate is sex and intercourse. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Right. There are people who have, who are paralyzed from the waist down, who cannot have intercourse and they have intimacy and sex. Mm -hmm. Yes. You heard what I just said. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Gina brought it up before. She's like, this is, people aren't thinking mm -hmm. sort of broadly and, and um, mm -hmm. globally enough about this concept. Is it okay if we don't read the last question? Because I kind of have to go and we're running a little bit. It was on one time. of the ones on our thing though. We can, we can save it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, I just, I'm making up conversation starters, right? Oh. If you had a flat tire, mm -hmm. could you change it by yourself? Mm, I could try. Mm -hmm. I if I could get the lug nuts off, I could. I mm -hmm. probably could because I can do most anything when I'm alone. So you know how to do it, kind of. All right. Why is that? Okay. This is it's a. I think it's a fun question. Like you can ask me. Well, I don't know. You can ask me. It's anything. a very gender specific question, and I don't think that was kind. Um, a tire's round. What are you doing? I think <laughs> Seth is on drugs today, guys. I don't even Not on know. Drugs. Um, but yeah, I want to really mm -hmm. encourage people in this conversation around sexuality and around intimacy to change the way you see it. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are great uh, books about this. One is Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. It's mm -hmm. an audio book. You can get it for free if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. You can get that audio book. She uh, narrates it, which is always really fun. Mm -hmm. There is a, an actual physical book of Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers sex god and the conservative church and it is a textbook so yes it's forty dollars but stuff it forty dollars is worth everything you get it's really um, good it's, it's amazing yeah. it's very it's small but it's very dense but amazing 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 especially if you were raised in a christian sphere of whatever um but yeah so we will be back next week send in any questions that you have to hello at anatomyofmarriage.com you can send us questions via instagram or facebook or whatevs mm -hmm. and someone just says i changed a tire and my ex got mad at me because other men saw me do it and it made him look bad i'm a i can't mm. make this open all the way it made him look bad he should have gotten out of the car Right. I am a woman. Hear me roar. I roll. <laughs> that is crazy town, but I am glad that you changed the tired air five right air there. Five. Um, so yeah, we'll be back. And uh, if this show is helpful to you, please mm -hmm. share it. That's the best thing that you could possibly do for us. If you Absolutely. like what we're doing. So, so sorry that Seth has to run. Yeah. We love you guys. Have an awesome day. And all right. Be amazing. <laughs> all right. Bye. Go change the tire. Bye. Go, go change the tire. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat>